Today, I'm going to ask three questions. Anybody with a high school level of science education should be able to answer them easily. But strangely enough, these are questions that 5G truthers can never answer. These questions aren't hard, but they are impossible to answer honestly if your business is fear scamming. Try asking the 5G or smart meter flurf in your life these questions if the response is discomfort or anger. It's probably a sign of dishonesty. It's as McToon always says, you've got to lie to flurf. I'm going to be mainly making this about 5G, but the questions apply just as well to any kind of fear scam where people are made afraid of everyday items of, of technology. So smart meters, electricity power distribution lines, vaccines, they all perfectly fit this template. So the first question, how dangerous is it? It's the simplest possible question. People who are adamant that 5G phones and smart meters are harmful always seem to struggle with this one. The idea is to get people to quantify how dangerous a thing really is. Sure, they can list a long list of diseases or disorders which they suspect are caused by 5G, but can they back up those claims with numbers? It's really dangerous, or do your own research are not valid answers to this question. Real epidemiologists go to great lengths to quantify the risk factors for diseases. They might be able to say that women in their 30s who smoke five cigarettes per day will increase their risk of lung cancer by a factor of three. Why can't people who think 5G is dangerous say something along similar lines? But you could even quantify risks relatively. For example, some scientists have claimed that living in a polluted city like Delhi in India exposes everybody to pollution equivalent of smoking 10 cigarettes a day. I'm not sure if that's true anymore, but if it were, we'd have a pretty good idea of the danger relative to something that we already know is bad. If something is dangerous, you should be able to say how dangerous it is. Truthers, however, will go to great lengths to avoid quantifying anything, not just because they don't know the answer, they don't want to know the answer. They actively avoid finding out. I've long suspected that they don't want to know the answer because deep down, maybe they also suspect that the risks aren't real. Anybody who struggles with this first question is gonna have some real problems with the second. What new component or feature of 5G makes it dangerous? 4G has been around for ages and it hasn't harmed anyone yet, at least not as far as I know. So what's so different about 5G that makes it worth worrying about? This question shouldn't be hard either. It's just a more specific way of asking why somebody thinks we ought to be afraid of the new thing rather than the old thing. If you want to explain why 5G is dangerous, I suppose you could download a freely available specification. You could identify any new component or feature that wasn't present in 4G and then filter out the changes for eliminate the things that don't seem potentially harmful. What you'd have left would be the parts of 5G that we ought to be concerned about. Now, why don't truthers ever do this? Well, one answer is that they've never actually had to do any real research at all. If your idea of research is watching fear scammers sell shungite pyramids on BitChute, then you're not gonna get this kind of information. Most fear scammers also have a, a less than high school level of scientific education. They probably don't have the technical skills to read a specification or, or any scientific documents. They are relying on stuff that they've learned through alt-med sources, which are also mainly written by completely unqualified people. Um, and so the cycle of ignorance is perpetuated. But there's a deeper reason why they know not to answer this question. And that's because it leads to yet another question, which is also a, a bit difficult for these people to answer. Would you be happy if we took 5G and removed all those features you previously identified that you think are dangerous. Assuming that somebody answered the, the, the second question honestly, the answer to this third question should probably be yes. Because if you take away all the harmful bits, then by definition, what you're left with must be harmless. But I don't think you'll ever get that answer from any smart meter or 5G truther. Anybody who is afraid of 5G probably thinks that all forms of radio communication are harmful. They'll say something like, you know, there is no safe dose of 
uh, electromagnetic radiation. They probably consider themselves to be sufferers of electromagnetic hypersensitivity, an entirely fictional disease in which people believe that they can literally feel invisible radio signals. Uh, those people would eventually be forced to admit that there's nothing specifically wrong with 5G, that other than the fact that it's more of the stuff that they don't like. This battle perhaps was never about 5G. When they said that 5G causes cancer and a list of other diseases, perhaps what they really meant was modern life causes these things. What they don't like is the ugly, noisy mess of modernity. And what about those folks who don't like smart meters? They're probably not a fan of any kind of electrical meter, gas meters or paying for stuff they use in general. Could it be that the objection to smart meters has nothing to do with the tiny little radio transmitter that's 15 meters away and everything to do with the fact that it's sending a signal back to the utility company that says how much electricity they've used? It means they're going to have to pay their electricity bills. Now, you might remember that there's a court case scheduled for a final hearing this February. A group called Legal Action Against 5G wants a moratorium on all new 5G installations in the UK. They've not been successful, mainly because they couldn't answer the three basic questions that I've mentioned so far. Um, if they'd been honest, they could have highlighted precisely what they think is dangerous about 5G, and then they could have sued to prevent that specific dangerous thing. What they did instead was insist that the court blocks all of 5G without saying what the difference between 5G and 4G ever was. They did share a portfolio of scientific evidence, but it's the kind of non-specific mess that simply lists things that might be caused by 5G without ever getting to any numbers. The judge observed that they failed to identify any health effects specific to 5G, and from a health perspective, there's really no difference between 4G and 5G. All of the claimants in this case eventually admitted that they were electrosensitives even their lawyer. The entire case was self-deception from the start. As McToon always says, you've got to lie to flurf. It's also impossible to be an honest 5G or smart meter campaigner. As ever, I'd love to know what you think. Please comment below or follow me on Mastodon. That's, uh, that's my address. Uh, that's where I hang out these days and I would love to know what you think. Thanks. 